Hello and good morning. Welcome to worship here at Bread of Life Deaf Lutheran Church. Dorothy saying good morning. Welcome to Bread of Life Deaf Lutheran Church. Today is May 2nd, which is the fifth Sunday of Easter. We will continue to celebrate Easter for two more weeks. Hi, I'm Michelle Lewis, and I'm the pastor here at Bread of Life. And I'm Dorothy Sparks. I'm a deacon here at Bread of Life. And I'm David Evans, ASL interpreter. So we have a bit of news, Michelle is saying. Both Dorothy and myself are vaccinated. Because we're fully vaccinated, we're able to be here together in close proximity and not wear masks. So today we're here worshiping together in the sanctuary. Dorothy said, it's been a long time. Michelle's saying, it certainly has been a long time and we're looking forward to returning to worship in person. Also, we will start having outdoor worship the first weekend in June, which is June 6th. So we continue to proclaim Christ is alive. So if you have some confetti remaining from your torn up paper chains that you made, go ahead and when we say Alleluia, throw some confetti in the air. Today in worship, we continue our study of the book of Acts. We remember how God has been active since the very beginning. When the Holy Spirit switches us on, how do our lives reflect God's actions to create justice with peace and trust that there is enough for everyone? Michelle is saying, we are acceptable to God this day and every day, and this is good news for us. We are capable to join with God to create justice and peace. Deacon Dorothy, yeah. Every one of us is valuable to God. We are not left alone in our struggles and our difficulties. And we are loved beyond measure. And completely for free. Pastor Michelle. So, gather your bread and your cup for communion today. And come, celebrate that the Creator loves all of us. Come and celebrate that the Holy Spirit comes to us and teaches us again about God's love. For those of you at home, if you have a candle, go ahead and light your candle as Deacon Dorothy lights the one here in the sanctuary.
Pastor Michelle. Christ is risen. Congregation, Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. God has broken the chains of death forever. Hallelujah. Congregation, yes, let our praises ring. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always, and also with you. Prayer for the day. God, you have a power that is eternal. You are the strength of those who believe. You are the hope of those who doubt. Help us who have not seen, have faith in you, and receive the full blessing of Christ. Amen. A reading from Psalm 16. Protect me, Lord God. I run to you for safety. And I have said, only you are my Lord. Every good thing I have is a gift from you. Your people are wonderful, and they make me happy. But worshipers of other gods will have much sorrow. I refuse to offer sacrifices of blood to those gods or to worship in their name. You, Lord, are all I want. You are my choice, and you keep me safe. You make my life pleasant, and my future is bright. I praise you, Lord, for being my guide. Even in the darkest night, your teachings fill my mind. I will always look to you as you stand beside me and protect me from fear. With all my heart, I will celebrate, and I can safely rest. I am your chosen one. You won't leave me in the grave, nor let my body decay. You have shown me the path to life, and you make me glad by being near to me. Sitting at your right side, I will always be joyful.
friends, uh, I want to give a little bit of introduction about our Bible lessons today because we have two. We have the psalm that Dorothy just signed, and then we have um, the middle part of Acts chapter 2. <clears throat> the Acts reading itself uses Psalm 16. And so today we included that psalm in our worship. The reading from the book of Acts continues the story from last week when the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost. You might recall in that lesson and worship last week was that promise that the Holy Spirit will come to the followers of Jesus. And in that lesson, as the people who received the Holy Spirit started speaking all kinds of languages they didn't know, and other people could understand them, onlookers around accused them of being drunk at nine o'clock in the morning. Now, the apostle Peter was really very offended by this, and he started to preach. And today's lesson in the book of Acts continues the message that Peter was sharing with that crowd. And in today's lesson specifically, Peter is preaching to the Israelites in that crowd. And so he draws from their shared history, their shared faith. Peter uses Psalm 16, and uh, before this lesson today, he used some verses from Joel as well. He uses that history to show the crowd and the community that's gathered there that Jesus is the fulfillment of the promise given to David. That promise that said, from your family, David, will come one who will show us God and will save us from our sins. And then Peter shows us through the psalm and the story of Jesus how David helps us look for this Messiah. And so with that, I'll ask Dorothy to share the lesson from the book of Acts. A reading from the book of Acts chapter 2, verses 22 through 41. Peter continued to preach to the other Israelites. Now listen to what I have to say about Jesus of Nazareth. God proved that he sent Jesus to you By having him work miracles, wonders, and signs. All of you know this. God had already planned and decided that Jesus would be handed over to you. So you took him and had evil men put him to death on a cross. But God set him free from death and raised him to life. Death could not hold Jesus. What David said are really the words of Jesus.
I always see the Lord near me. And I will not be afraid with the Lord at my right side. Because of this, my heart will be glad, my words will be joyful, and I will live in hope. The Lord won't leave me in the grave. I am God's holy one, and God will not let my body decay. The Lord has shown me the path to life and makes me glad by being near. Peter said, my friends, it is right for me to speak about our ancestor David. He died and was buried, and his tomb is still here. But David was a prophet, and he knew that God had made a promise that God would not break. God told David that someone from his own family would someday become a king. David knew this would happen. And so he told us that Christ would be raised to life. David proclaimed that God would not leave Christ in the grave nor let Christ's body decay. All of us can tell you that God has raised Jesus Christ to life. Jesus was taken up to sit at the right hand of God. And was given the Holy Spirit just as the Creator promised. Jesus is the one who has given the Spirit to us, and that is what you are experiencing now. David did not ascend to heaven. So he wasn't talking about himself when he said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand. Until I make your enemies into a footstool. Everyone in Israel should then know for certain that God has made Jesus both Lord and Christ, even though you put him to death on a cross. When the people heard this, they were very upset. They asked Peter and the other apostles, Friends, what shall we do? Peter said, Turn back to God. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins will be forgiven. Then you will be given the Holy Spirit. This promise is for you and your children. It is for everyone our Lord God will choose, no matter where they live. Peter told them many other things as well. Then he said, I beg you to save yourselves from what will happen to all these evil people. On that day, 
about 3,000 people believed his message and were baptized. Word of God, word of life. Amen. My friends, it is my prayer that you will trust me. Amen. All right, well, you all can see that things are changing. They're beginning to change again. This time, uh, maybe changing more the way we want them to be. Because Dorothy and I are both fully vaccinated, it is safe for us to be together without masks. And this is something that we all have been waiting for for more than a year. Because we hear a bread of life as Christians who love one another, and we are people who love our neighbors, we have been waiting to be together in person for this a very long year. And there is light, there is hope that we can be together again soon. As I said at the beginning of worship, we are planning to begin outdoor worship and we'll continue, I hope we will continue our online worship as well. That will begin um, the first Sunday of June in person. I want to let you know we will still need to wear masks and keep physical distance from one another because not everyone will be vaccinated. Some uh, will not be vaccinated yet because they cannot be vaccinated. Some will not be vaccinated yet because they are unsure whether they should do this. And some will not be vaccinated perhaps because they don't believe it really matters if they are vaccinated. So for those of us who are unsure if we should be vaccinated, I would encourage you, strongly encourage you, please talk to your doctors or your care providers and get facts from them. There is a lot of wrong information out there and it's easy to be confused and to feel like, oh, I'm not sure that I should do this. So I encourage you to talk with your doctors and your care providers to get information from them. And for any of those among us who think it doesn't really matter if they get vaccinated or not, it does matter <laughs> because there are kids among us like my younger child who is only 14, or for those beautiful, bold kids that you've been seeing here in worship since Easter, they can't get vaccinated yet. So they all need you to get your vaccine. Because a vaccine for COVID-19 is one way for us to show those others around us who can't get the vaccine, it's one way we can show them we love you. We value your lives. So that especially those kids among us can get back into a rhythm of seeing other people and being with 
other people. So, you know, to be like really blunt, vaccines really require us to trust other people a lot. Because there are a lot of other people involved in developing vaccines. And those are people we don't know. And they're doing a lot of scientific research that we don't necessarily understand. And yet, when we look back over time, we can see that there have been illnesses that have disappeared from our lives. I think of polio, I think of uh, German measles, I think of um, all kinds of other illnesses that have caused lots of difficulty and struggles in our lives, and it causes people to die. Those illnesses have gone away. And so, we can be confident that vaccines do work. And they do require us to trust others a lot. So I imagine that many of you might at this moment be wondering something like what my kids might be wondering is how do vaccines relate to today's Bible lesson? And you might even really be thinking that a discussion about medical issues shouldn't be involved in what I'm preaching about. Especially because right now there is lots of disagreement, lots of controversy about COVID, about vaccines, about how we're supposed to live with COVID here and now. So some of you might be thinking, Pastor Michelle, you shouldn't be talking about this. But it is such an important part of our lives. I believe it would be irresponsible for me not to address the topic. I follow Jesus. And Jesus did not hide from controversial topics in his life. So I want to be clear. I believe that everyone who is able should be vaccinated. For COVID-19, but also for other illnesses that we can vaccinate against. Because what you and I do matters. When we trust with others in our lives, it makes a difference. It makes a difference in our own lives, and it makes a difference in other people's lives. When you and I decide to act to help others, even if it doesn't really help me or you specifically, that decision to help others is life-changing. And that life-changing experience is the truth that Peter is sharing in today's Bible lesson. In this lesson, Peter is telling the Jewish people who are gathered there, those folks in particular that Peter is talking to, he is telling them that trusting Jesus has been life-changing for Peter himself. Now remember, Peter denied, denied that he even knew Jesus not just once, 
not twice, but three times Peter denied it. And then he wept. And even then, this is the amazing thing that Peter is telling us. Even then, Jesus accepts and forgives Peter. Fully. Without hesitation. With love. Jesus. Jesus. Trust Peter. And that and so now Peter wants everyone else to know how powerful it is to trust others specifically to trust Jesus because in trusting Jesus, Peter proclaims to us and to the crowd way back in the Bible, he proclaims, when you trust Jesus, you are trusting God. You are trusting the God of King David. You are trusting the God of our ancestors, Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. When you trust in Jesus, you are trusting in the God of all creation. And so this is why Peter refers back to the prophets. That was included in last week's lesson. And then in the Psalms, which we refer to today. The Hebrew Bible gives us glimpses and pictures and stories about God. And in Jesus, we see and we know and we experience God in person. And Peter wants us to Listen to how this has changed his life. When we trust Jesus, we trust God. Now, I know we people, we have to practice trusting. We really do. Because every single one of us have had lots of experiences of being disappointed when others have not been trustworthy. We have lots of experiences when our feelings are hurt, when we are disappointed, when our hearts break because we trust someone who's not trusted. not alone. We're not alone. Jesus knows how this feels too. In those moments on the cross, when Jesus needed others, they all hid in Peter. And Peter, Peter himself, shouted out his denials. And he ran away. And still, Jesus trusts those followers. Jesus comes back to them, eats with them, and helps to understand just who Jesus is. Jesus trusts those followers who made mistakes. And 
so Peter, Peter wants everyone to know they can trust God. And King David and Jesus. So the people in the crowd, they responded, they said, how, how, what are we supposed to do? Peter said, turn back to God, turn around, repent. Be baptized in the name of Christ. Soak your whole life in Jesus. Like, just jump in the water with Jesus. Be totally uh, focused on Jesus. have water in the bowl here today. I don't know if you can see. You see the water? For, for us, remember our baptism. Remember you are a beloved child of God. God created you just as you are. Remember that what you do matters. How you live your life makes a difference. And when you trust others, especially when you trust Jesus, it makes a difference in your life and it makes a difference in other people's lives too. When you act to help others, even if you yourself don't benefit, you make the world a better place. This is what Jesus calls us to do. And right now, in this moment in time, one decision we can make is to get our vaccine. Not the same as trusting Jesus with our whole lives, but it does show our neighbors that we love them. So this next week, I invite you to try something. It's not a huge thing, but it's an important thing in our lives of faith. I want you to practice trusting Jesus. Okay, so even if you're unsure, even if you're like, I don't know about Jesus, I'm not sure. Let Jesus know, I want to trust you. Give me peace. Prayers of the People Lord Jesus Christ, you conquered death. You rose from the dead and are alive forevermore. Help us remember and experience your loving presence with us. 
Help us remember that you are with us. Whenever we feel confused and overwhelmed, you are here to guide and direct us. Whenever we feel sorrow, you are here to comfort and counsel us. Whenever we feel tempted, you are here to strengthen and inspire us. Whenever we feel lonely, you are here to encourage and befriend us. Whenever we or our loved ones encounter death, you bring all of us to glory on the other side of this life. Help us remember and live so that the hope of resurrection will show through our lives. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always, congregation, and also with you. Please share a sign of God's peace with one another. And for those who are far, we can share God's peace with them as well, even if they're not near us. This is our time when we invite you to give your offering, to share some of your money with this congregation. And the white reminds us that we continue to celebrate Easter, that amazing promise that death is not the end of the story. And here at Bread of Life, God calls us to share this hope and promise with the deaf community and their loved ones, the promise that God loves Undertaking this ministry isn't cheap, it's not free, and so we invite you and ask you to give generously. You can send a check to Bread of Life. Uh, we want to let you know we do check our mailbox multiple times a week, or you can use an online giving option, and you can find all the information you need to do that. It's on our website. And the website address is www.breadoflifedeaf.org. So we invite you and encourage you to share generously. An offering prayer. God, come to us. Now receive these gifts and our lives. Congregation, we lift our hearts to you as you lifted Jesus up from the grave. Through Jesus, bring everything from bondage to freedom, from death to life. Amen.
The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is our duty and our delight that we should everywhere and always give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. We give thanks for Jesus, who is willing to die to destroy the power of death. We give thanks for Mary Magdalene, and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection. That the earth, the sea, and the sky, and all their creatures. That the angels, and the archangels, and all in heaven. Praise your name and join in the everlasting hymn. Last night, when he gathered to eat with his friends and followers, he was betrayed. The Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it for his disciples to eat, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. And after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is this new covenant in my blood, said for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. We invite you to sign the Lord's Prayer. Now, let us celebrate this Easter day. Come, enjoy God's gifts and God's peace. You all are invited to this table. This table belongs to God. We are honored to share it with anyone who desires to eat. When you serve one another, please be mindful that it's the bread, body of Christ, that you serve, and it's the cup, blood of Christ.
For those of you who are on your own, allow me to adhere the cup and the bread. The body of Christ is eating for you, blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in his grace now and forever. Amen. A blessing for sending. Darkness has become light. Sorrow has given way to joy and to hope. As you have been transformed by the power of the cross, go forth into the world and share the good news that God loves you. We go in the name of the Creator and the Savior and the Holy Spirit. Congregation. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! You are Christ's body, Christ raised up for the world. Go in peace, share the good news that God loves you. Congregation, say it with me. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Amen.